So, how is everybody's uh, big wild sleep out getting on? Uh, doesn't feel that long ago when I was on camera uh, setting the Who's Poo challenge, um, and that went extraordinarily well. Um, literally, before going live uh, here, um, I've been trying to sort of uh, comment as much as possible on everybody's scores. Seems uh, we've got a lot of poo professors out there, so uh, well done to you, li you guys doing that. Um, now, I've said that we need to get uh, your aprons on for this, and I'm just going to put mine on here. And uh, I've also um, got a recipe in front of me as well. Um, we need people to, uh, the recipe is actually on our website, rsb.org.uk forward slash big wild sleep out. Um, so it's called a moth lure. Now, there's lots of different ways of attracting moths. Uh, there's very fancy ways, which I'll show you how that works when we're outside in just a moment. Um, but there's a lot more simple ways that you could do things at home. So, uh, which doesn't take a lot of fancy things. So, I set you a shopping list the other day, uh, which involved getting bananas, some golden syrup, some sugar, uh, some fizzy colory drink of some sort. There's a glass here, very nice. And basically a saucepan and a, sp and a spoon. Very, very simple stuff. Now, what we're making here is a very sugary, sticky solution, a very sugary solution rather than sticky really. Uh, the aim of this isn't to attract moths and get them to stick to it. Uh, Realise that might feel like the logical thing that we're trying to do. Um, by the way, I feel a little bit like Delia Smith here with a saucepan and an apron on. This is a little bit embarrassing. Anyway, back to moths. Um, so what we're trying to do is to make a solution that is just very sugary and very attractive to moths. Uh, moths like to feed on nectar and flowers, which is very sweet and very nice tasting. So we're trying to replicate that. And once we've made this solution up, we're going to go outside and plaster it all over the place to see what moths visit later. So uh, this will happen at night, so you might have to venture out with a torch and sneak around the garden to see what is going on. But how do you make this to start? Uh, you get your saucepan. This is actually a little bit warm already and I've kind of made a bit of a head start but I'm just going by the recipe that we posted on our webpage. So it starts with a bit of banana. Um, I've got an incredibly ripe banana here. In fact, it's falling to pieces in my hand. Yeah, this is gross. Right, so that's gone in. Right, so I'm just gonna mash this up into, into the saucepan. Then it says, mix in some sugar. So I've got some brown sugar here, which is really good stuff. Um, so in goes, a little bit of that and what else it then says to pour in some of the cola so in that goes now be sparing with your cola because you don't want this to be too watery it needs to be sticky so you can uh, paint it onto a tree stump or a fence post or something later on so keep mixing all this so it comes together really nicely um, then it says to mix in a bit of sugar and treacle, of course. I used golden syrup. I think that's acceptable if you haven't got treacle. Um, in fact, we used this golden syrup to really good effect this afternoon. Um, we needed some snacks for the big while sleep out, as I'm sure you all do. And we made some flapjacks, which uh, is a very sensible thing to do with your spare golden syrup. Um, but do spare some for the moths. So that's all mixing around nicely. And we need this to go onto a stove. I'm not going to like that because I'm terrible at leaving the stove on and I think that should, that mixture is okay at the moment and I'm getting absolutely smothered in stuff here. Um, now, while that's kind of pretend heating up, this will be, you'll be doing this for real at home. Um, this is one for the grown-ups and uh, they may, it may shed a few tears over this but um, hopefully it'll be worth it. So what you need is a bottle of red wine some cottony sort of absorbent strips of some sort, some sort of material that will absorb the wine. And you're gonna, oh, oh dear. Well, that's busy. Is that actually wine? Who knows? And what we're gonna do is pop these straight in. Oh, I may as well get my hands dirty. They're dirty already. And what we're gonna do is to Mix that into the rag like that, so you end up with a, almost like a rope, which is all absolutely full of lovely sugary sweet red wine, which moths will love as well as our sugary solution there. So, um, right, I need to get all this ready to go outside. So, 
Um, we did have a few questions as well, by the way, which um, I was going to answer whilst uh, doing this. Um, but you can tell I'm no cook, so I'm kind of uh, getting distracted by doing too many things. Um, but one of the questions that did come in during the quiz actually was what's the difference between a moth and a butterfly? Because a lot of people think uh, things like uh, moths come out at night, butterflies come out in the day. Uh, that isn't true. Lots of day flying moths um, that you can see obviously in the daytime. Um, we, I've even caught uh, butterflies in moth traps, which is very, very unusual as well. Um, but the key difference is just the tips of the antennae. That's the only consistent difference between a moth and a butterfly is the tip of the antennae. And there's a club on the end of butterflies antennae, which tells you it's a butterfly. Moths have very long, straight antennae. So that, that is pretty much the only difference. So, how's this coming on? It's looking very well. Just while I'm mixing in a little bit more banana as well, because it's a little bit lumpy. We don't want lumpy uh, sugary mixture for the moths. They don't like it. Um, this activity, actually, we, um, we took from our Wildlife Explorer magazines, actually, um, which are fantastic magazines our youth membership get. Um, so we've also got a link to that on the website as well. And uh, along with, actually, a lot of the activities tonight we've taken from our, our uh, Wildlife Explorer magazines. So an amazing resource there for the kids to uh, get involved. And in the case of me here this evening, the grown-ups, plenty to get involved with. So, right, I think we should head outside with our wine rope, our sugary solution. I've also got my paintbrush, so let's head outside. There we go, this way. Okay, so you can see a tent in the background. Um, the wind has actually dropped a little bit now, which is really, really, really useful. Um, my last, the last time I went live, I had to stay indoors. It was just far too windy, um, but things are coming together beautifully for the evening. There's a buzzard flying around over my head. Beautiful evening. Hope it's the same where you are. Um, right. So first and foremost, I'm going to use some of the sugary solution to put on this post. So like I said earlier on, you can use a tree um, or a, a fence post or anything, a wall even. Um, but all you want to do is just post just do this a few times, just some little lines. And if you can see that happening there. But that is enough. And what we're trying to replicate here is sap coming out of a tree. Um, sap is a very, very sweet, sticky mixture that moths love to feed from. It's great for them, it's just full of sugar and minerals. And this is kind of replicating, you know, if you imagine a birch tree with sap dripping down it, this is what we're trying to get. So if you actually have a tree in the garden that is releasing sap, you've got an automatic moth trap there. That'll work perfectly fine. Right, so we're going to leave that. And I'm going to come back to that when it's dark with my torch and see what moths visit. Fingers crossed they do. You don't get that many, but sometimes you get some very special ones. And if you come over this way, uh, what I'm going to do with my wine rope, keep coming. You can see we're near some vegetation, got a hedge in the background, lots of trees. And I'm simply going to put that on the washing line and see what comes back to it later. So I'm keeping all this in a nice enclosed space to see what happens. Now, I said there was a fancy way of moth trapping and if anybody has a moth trap at home, if there's a few lucky people, please, please set your trap tonight. It's gonna to be fantastic. Um, if the wind drops, it's gonna be nice and mild so there'll be plenty of moths out. But this is my moth trap here. And if you come in nice and close, We've got lots of egg boxes inside, which is where the moths will rest in the overnight and in the morning. Uh, this is the lid, and what I'm going to do, this is a little funnel with a very bright bulb, and uh, moths are attracted to light, we all know that. There's lots of different theories around why they're attracted to light, but essentially it's about UV light, ultraviolet light. And I think the best theory I've heard is that moths kind of navigate using UV light which is reflected off the moon and maybe even the stars. That's quite an amazing thought in itself. But they navigate using those. So if you have a very bright UV light down on the ground and also a very bright UV light in the sky, which is the moon, uh, moths get a little bit confused and disorientated and they stumble into this funnel and end up in the moth trap. So I'm gonna set this when it gets dark and I'm gonna join you back in the morning at nine o'clock. I'm gonna jump in live with a nice and early live stream and we're gonna look through this moth trap and see what I've caught overnight and I'll tell you all about the different species that you, that you could find in your own garden and I can't wait to see what you catch as well. So we've got more activities coming up for the rest of the evening. So I'm gonna go off, get my moth trap all set. So uh, I'll leave you to it.